Well, good afternoon. Welcome to another Daily Devotion. This is Daily Devotion 156. I am Logan Hargort. It's great to be together and we're turning to the book of Revelation. This is the last week we'll be in Revelation, providing we manage to get through all of them. And we're going to be looking at chapter one, where we begin. Uh, we began last week glimpsing into the joyful state of the people of God. But before we do that, let's bow our head in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for your love for us. Thank you for this wonderful promise that we find in the book of Revelation, that we will one day see you. Give us eyes to see beautiful things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, if you've got your Bibles with you, if you want to open them up, we're going to be turning to Revelation 21 and considering the great city that we find there. Then I saw, wait, that's verse 1. We're looking at verse 9. What am I talking about? Then came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues and spoke to me saying, come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, its radiance like a most rare jewel, like a jasper clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. On the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. <clears throat> and the one who spoke with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city and its gates and walls. The city lies four square, its length the same as its width, and he measured the city with his rod, 12,000 stadia. Its length and width and height are equal, and also measured its walls, 144 cubits by human measurements, which is also an angel's measurement. The wall was built of jasper, while the city was pure gold, like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with every kind of jewel. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, each of the gates made of a single pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. Well, we've seen a lot of judgment in the book of Revelation and a lot of angels declaring judgment, one of the very fascinating things that we find in this section here is that one of the angels of judgment come to John with a message of joy. I wonder if you pick that up in verse 9. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said, Come. I'll show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. It must have been a little bit jarring for John, mustn't it? He, he'd seen this angel. He obviously remembers the angel. He had seen this angel pour out a plague of death and damnation and judgment upon the world. And now the same angel comes with a picture of, of glorious joy. And I think it's a wonderful reminder for us that it's the same God that judges that also offers joy, hope, and peace for the people of God. And also that there aren't good angels and evil angels, as if there's some angels that offer good things and some that offer bad, but there are just angels who serve God and do his bidding as God pleases. And so God had chosen this angel to deliver judgment as well as to usher in this great picture of blessed joy. But notice this bride that comes. 
You've got to imagine what John was probably thinking. See the bride, he's probably turning around expecting to see a person. But he turns around and he sees a city. But of course that wouldn't be a surprise to John, because we remember that for John he's already seen a city depicted as a woman. Of course it was Babylon, wasn't it? And Babylon, the whore, was a city as well. The whore was that city which was thrown down and judged. And now he sees the true bride in the form of a city. And there's, there's four spectacular things to notice about the city. Firstly, it has the glory of God, we find out. Verse 11. Verse 10 first. He carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain. He goes up upon this huge mountain and he sees the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And how does he describe the glory of God? It's radiance like a most rare jewel, like a jasper clear as crystal. John is, is struggling to find words to describe the reality of the glory of God that is emanating from the city. As, as the city lowers down, it's so spectacular that John can't describe the beauty and magnificence of the glory of God that emanates from it. It's not just the physical beauty, but it's the glory of God that shines off from the city that he's trying to describe. And it's because the glorified church is sinless. And we remembered that last time we talked about how the fact that God was going to remove all of the sin from the church. And so now in its glorified state, it is emitting the glory of God and of the husband, Jesus Christ. But not only is this city having the glory of God, but it also has a great wall around it. Verse 12. It had a great High wall. Now notice this, with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. And then verse 14, And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Now, numbers are significant in Revelation because they're symbols, as we've seen time and time again. They're symbols that point us to something. So what do we think these, these 12 things are pointing to? 12 tribes, 12 apostles, 12 gates, 12 foundations, 12 angel messengers. Of course, we, we know that 12 is a number for completion in the Bible. So you've got the 12 apostles, which represent the New Testament church. And the 12 tribes of Israel, which represent the Old Testament church. And these are what? The entrance to the city and the foundation of the city. And it's a great reminder to us that the church itself is built on the prophets and the apostles, upon the Old Testament and the New Testament, upon the whole body of Christ. All of it has the same foundation from beginning to end. Every believer is built together into the same city. We don't have an Old Testament people in one city and a New Testament people in another city. We have one people and one city. It's a joining together of the whole body of Christ. And it's a great reminder to us of what we call the invisible church. The invisible church. If you're not sure what the invisible church is, it's what we talk about when we speak about the, the one church throughout all ages that exists. It's, it's not bits and pieces, but one. And at this time right now, that whole one church exists in perfect unity. We only see the visible church, don't we? But God knows who the invisible church is. And here we see it magnificently joined together in harmony. But then notice also that this, this city has enough room for everyone. Have a look at verse 15 to 17 with me. The one who spoke with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city. The city lies four square, so it's a cube. Its length is the same as its width. 
and he measured the city with his rod. It was 12,000 stadia, which is just over 1,300 miles. So it's huge. It's massive. But not only is it 1,300 wide, its length, its width, and its height are equal. So it's a 1,300 mile wide and high and long city. It is an immensely big city. Huge. Its walls are 144 cubits thick. Now, a cube, a cubit, is 45 centimeters. It's big. It's a thick wall. It's, it, the idea is that it's a wall no one could ever break through. And it's a city so big you could never fill. Now, granted, we live in an age where there are cities that are bigger than 1,300 miles. Maybe not high, but definitely wide. But for, for a people of, of this size, to describe a city this big is to describe a city that is bigger than imagining. It, it's bigger than you could ever contemplate filling. And, and the point is, there's enough room for everyone. There's enough room for you, and there's enough room for me. It'll never be filled up. It's not like some religions that say there's only room for 144,000. You've heard that one before. There's only room for 144,000 believers, and then there's the second-rate heaven after that. No, no, there's room for everyone who believes in Jesus Christ. It's, it's glorious news. And it's no shabby city. Because John also tells us that, that it has beauty. It's magnificently beautiful, as he describes it in verse 18 to 21. The wall was built of jasper. The city's foundation was pure gold. Sorry, the city itself was pure gold, like clear glass. Now, a clear glass description might be weird to you, but think about gold. If you, I mean, if you've seen really good quality gold, I used to work in a jewelry store, and so we used to have some high carat gold, and when you finished polishing it, I think a clear glass description is incredible because the reflection on it, on it is just amazing. But this, the foundations of the city are adorned with every kind of jewel. The first is jasper, and he goes through and he lists these 12, funnily enough, beautiful stones. And it makes you think, of course, of the breastplate of Aaron, don't you? Doesn't it? With the 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel. So these stones represent the beauty of the church. And then the 12 gates, and this is kind of hard to comprehend or imagine, but it's meant to be that way. The 12 gates are, are huge pearls. So you, you walk up and you see the gate and it's just this ginormous big pearl that swings out of the way. Except for it doesn't need to open and close as we'll find out tomorrow. And the streets of the city are pure gold, like transparent glass. So as you walk up and down, all you see is gold and jewels. And we get the picture, don't we? It's beautiful. There's... There's no muck. There's no tagging. There's no broken fences. There's no overgrown lawns. There's no weeds. It's just beauty and costly ornaments everywhere. Because it's a city fit for the bride of the king. And that's what he's preparing us to be. You know, one of the one of the things I think we're often in danger of doing is judging the church of Jesus Christ based off what we see now. This is what the world does, isn't it? The world looks at the church and sees a despisable, despicable thing. It, it, it's dirty and they fight and bicker and they get things wrong and they're not very strong and they're not very pretty and they're not very good and, and, and there's nothing really appealing about it. But, but what John shows us here is a stunning portrayal of what the church is in eternity. And it's important for us to see that and to remember what God is doing. Don't judge the church based off what it looks like now. Because the work's not finished. That's like judging an artist on his picture which hasn't been finished yet. Or on a builder who hasn't finished building the house. Or on a mechanic who's halfway through fixing the car. That's ridiculous. You wait for the product to be finished and then inspect it. 
And so it is with the church. It may look downtrodden, it may look beaten down, it may look weak, it may look humble, but God is not finished. And one day we will see the church glorified in Jesus Christ. And it will be far more magnificent than what John describes. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this hope that you are not finished with your church. Would you give us faith to trust that? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks so much for tuning in with me for another daily devotion. It's been great to be together. We'll be back here tomorrow for another Westminster Wednesday as we look at God's creation of mankind. And after that, we'll be back into the book of Revelation again. Have a great week, and I will see you tomorrow.